for joining on with me. Good morning. Good morning. We are here to talk about five charts, five charts that have been donated by you, my lovely followers. Um, I will actually be doing an all call tomorrow, so be on the look for that uh, for new charts. Hello, just in time on Instagram. Hello, everybody on Facebook jumping on. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, yeah, we'll be doing an all call for more charts on Thursday, so keep an eye out for that. I'll be posting that across social media channels, but right now we have five more charts that we're going to be talking about this morning. Uh, this is where I plug in people's birth dates, places, and times, and we dissect what it means to, to have certain placements in the natal chart. We'll talk about some basic astrology stuff, some advanced astrology stuff, hopefully give some people some great feedback. Y'all love the videos, so uh, we'll just keep on, keep on doing them. Uh, if you would like to be a part of the live stream, uh, or if you would like to um, private message me for an appointment, you can always hit me up, give me your birth date, place, and exact birth time. If you would like a session, you can always visit ScorpioRisingAstrology.com, uh, also where I have my online classes where you can check that out. So let's go ahead. We'll start with our first chart of the morning. Uh, and our first chart of the morning is Tati. Good morning. How are you? Cheers. Okay, so we've got Tati first up. Let's take a peek. So we've got a Cancer Ascendant. <laughs> makes you a little bit more sensitive, a little bit more caring, a little bit more empathetic towards others. Ruler of the chart is the moon. The moon is over in Capricorn in the seventh. It's a really interesting placement because um, the moon itself is our emotional state. And to have that ruling the chart, we already have Cancer ruling the chart, so there's, there's a lot of emotional tendencies here. But to put the moon in Capricorn diminishes the emotional state because Capricorn likes to keep things business oriented, logical, and really tries to make sure that everything is is rational and understandable, right? So we have that part of the chart that's kind of interesting. Um, but then also putting the ruler of the chart in the seventh house of relationships means that you know you're just you're a sucker for love. Uh, both, you know, can be a good thing, but also can be a detriment. If 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 we're being honest, it's not necessarily super great when we revolve our emotional health around somebody else's presence in our lives. Uh, so we just need to make sure that that's both understood and worked with. Like, yes, relationships are really what, what life is about and really help us to move forward. And there are other kind of really important relationship markers in the chart too. But when it comes to... When it comes to your emotional health, we also need to understand that you as a person need to be emotionally sober, um, which is uh, a phrase that I, I'm stealing from Elizabeth Gilbert, who recently did a, a live video talking about her experience with COVID. I love that phrase so much. Emotionally sober people um, do not rely on these substances or the presence of other people in order to function um, in their heart space and i think that's that's beautiful like people are people are seasoning for life but they shouldn't necessarily be the the main course um anyway so that's something just to be aware of uh we have a very strong sun in the 10th house uh an exalted sun in aries co-present with jupiter in aries absolutely glorious uh being ruled by this retrograde mars and scorpio in the fifth interesting interesting um so there are many many ways that we could take this um but it seems like children um uh, and the fifth house topics of not just children but also parenting sexuality creativity there's a very large component of that fifth house that's being pulled into the tenth of success where the spotlight is being shown but also that jupiter means that the sixth house of work is co-present in the tenth um, and let's also check and see where Pisces is. Pisces is up in the ninth. Okay. So altogether, I think it's really important to understand that the fifth house of children uh, is in a cool spot, um, but having the the sun here and having it connected with Mars in such a way, I really think that one of the things you'll be famous for is your children. Um, and your creative endeavors as well, but specifically when we see the ruler of the 10th in the 5th, that's somebody whose children's legacy surpass their own and they carry on kind of the torch for the life. Um, and it's not to say that you won't be important because having the greater benefic of Jupiter and having the sun in Aries exalted in the 10th, like those are massively famous placements, but you'll become famous through your children is, is kind of the, the way that the chart is, is written. 
but you're also very sociable. So like you, you're very, you're very appealing um, to the general public. Like you being in the spotlight, it, it just kind of makes sense because we also have this Venus and Taurus in the 11th house of social groups, uh, which I think is just fabulous. I think it's, it's wonderful because Venus, the goddess of love and abundance and beauty uh, in her home sign of Taurus, where she's very strong in the 11th house of social groups, like that really just makes you stand out as, as the beauty of the group. Um, and having the exalted sun in the tenth of of success and spotlight, I think that that's that's a good pairing. It's it's just a really really good pairing. Uh, Saturn and Taurus in the tenth in in the eleventh though, uh, co-present with this Venus is 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 kind of a deeper level to the relationships that I wanted to to kind of bring forward. First and foremost, having the moon in Capricorn in the seventh house does mean that your romantic relationships are a little bit more difficult and need a little bit more of your your energy to navigate. But your social relationships, your friendships are actually 10 times stronger than any intimate relationship that you would have. And we also have Saturn here in Taurus and Saturn in Taurus and a fellow Earth sign. I really do appreciate it's a very heavy placement, but it means that your friends are your rocks and they also provide really great advice. Um, and it's not just you being the center of attention in your social groups, but also the structural support of the social group that I think will be very important throughout your life. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. Your friends will actually become your greatest allies as you start to navigate this whole uh, kind of fame dynamic, but also the relationship and the children situation. There's a lot to be there's a lot to be had here. Uh, we have a direct correlation to the 10th house of fame uh, and the second house of finance, which I really, really enjoy. North node is in Leo here down in the second house. So money is something that needs to learn how to be mastered. Uh, this go around, but it is very much connected to fame. So we have multiple fame markers in the chart. Again, that fame will be brought on by children. Friendships are actually stronger relationships than romantic relationships in this chart. Um, and also the the eighth house of death, taxes, business and estates, we have the south node here. So I would very much pay attention to uh, to your taxes. I would hire a CPA. I would really make sure that we get you compliant. Um, and make sure that you don't fall prey to any hidden fees or taxes or business disputes by having the legal and the financial team in place to handle those processes. Don't try to do it alone. Um, there is this tendency, like when your chart really starts to collapse and when your chart really starts to um, fold in on itself, if you hit a really sour or a weak spot, we have this Mercury in Pisces in the ninth, and you'll surrender so you'll surrender yourself into the ambiguous world of spirituality and also foreign cultures. Like you're probably already escaping into anime, um, but when when we look at Mercury in Pisces in the ninth, Mercury, the planet of the mind, in his detriment of Pisces, the mutable water sign of the fishes. Like there's this there's this need for you to submerge yourself and almost drowned your sorrows in a way through the ninth house of travel, foreigners, higher education, and spirituality, uh, which is not necessarily ideal. Um, and it might even, it might even make you struggle intensely with schoolwork because your brain just doesn't focus like normal people. Um, but if we learn how to channel that and we learn how to use your assets in a way that they would like to be used and not necessarily in the logical, in the more strict uh, kind of rule oriented aspect of of the chart, then we'll we'll find greater strength for sure. Like you're more of a spokesperson. You're not more of a details person. We want to avoid the details and talk more about the charisma of the chart, talk more about the um, the affluence of the chart and the influence of the chart, not necessarily the background, the nitty gritty, the Excel spreadsheets. Like that's where the chart becomes very, very weak. Okay. Thank you, Tati. I very much appreciate you donating your chart. Um, let's see. Uh, good morning, Alyssa. Yeah, definitely that emotionally sober thing. Um, check out Elizabeth Gilbert. I'm sure you know who she is. She wrote Eat, Pray, Love, but she wrote Big Magic, which is one of my personal favorite um, creative books of all time. And she went live talking about her experience with COVID and used that term emotionally sober. And I thought that, oh, it just it just really hit me in the in the feels. I absolutely adore it. Okay. 
Uh, let's go to chart number two. So chart number two is going to be Katie's chart. Oh, no, just kidding. I'm showing you transits. I'm showing you transits, not the word document. There we go. There she is. Miss Katie, my darling. How are you? Um, so cheers. Good morning. Gemini Ascendant uh, automatically makes you a little bit more airy, a little bit more fluid, a little bit more creative, a little bit more dynamic. Bipolar at its worst, right? Um, Gemini is the sign of the extremes. And when we have a sign on the the Ascendant, which is the, the rising sign, the imprinted sign uh, on our spirit at the time of our birth, like that, that tends to dictate a large portion of the chart. And when we have, when we're blessed by Gemini, it's the chameleon archetype, you know, it's the the sign that goes in a million directions who tends to have a very quick mind um but we have we have some issues there so let's let's go ahead and continue to unpack this so the ruler of your chart is this mercury in pisces up in the 10th house of success putting the ruler of the chart in the 10th house of success does mean that there is a crave for fame there is a crave for attention but mercury is also in pisces here seems to be the theme of the morning mercury the planet of the mind ruling the chart would normally make the mind very quick very agile um very hyper focused very detail oriented very good with contracts and rules um, however, Mercury is in Pisces here. Mercury uh, is actually in his least favorite sign. Mercury does not like to be in Pisces. And what that does is it kind of waters down the brain. Um, it makes you feel like you're you're walking with a fishbowl on your head. Uh, it dilutes the mind. It makes you lose details, makes memory just a little bit fuzzy. You know, you can still be quick and witty with Gemini, but we need to do some Mercury remediation in your chart for sure. So I would really encourage you to Work with Mercury, work with Hermes, set up a Mercury altar, um, uh, make offerings of coffee on Wednesdays to that planetary energy to help strengthen the mind and really make sure that the ruler of your chart is taken care of. Because if you suffer from lack of focus, if your mind starts to play tricks on you, if you start to feel that kind of watery sensation creep into the mind uh, where the emotions start to invade the mental space and start to turn your brain into scrambled eggs. Yeah, Mercury is the one who we would call on to remediate that. So that's something to, to definitely take stock in just as basic planetary remediation. Let's see. We also have a couple cool pileups. We have a couple stelliums. Um, Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, private message me for all requests for the, the live stream. Um, we have a couple stelliums in the chart. We have down here in the sixth house of work, health and pets. We have the moon in Scorpio, Jupiter in Scorpio, Pluto Scorpio, North Node Scorpio. So let's talk about the sixth house for two seconds, because this is a house that's emphasized in your chart very, very highly. Um, the sixth house of work, health and pets holds your moon. So whenever you are feeling emotionally unstable, the best thing you could possibly do is to throw yourself into a daily task of work. Um, being of service to other people is one of the ways to kind of etch a sketch your, your emotional state. Um, and I really enjoy that for your chart because it, it's a quick reset. It definitely helps to ground you a little bit more and it can, it can really be a vessel for you to pour out your mental emotional energies that are getting a little bit clogged or chaotic. You know, Jupiter and Scorpio here, I really want you to avoid the impulse to expose other people's secrets in the workplace. Um, like, I know with Jupiter and Scorpio, like you tend to, you tend to be gossip girl, like you tend, like Jupiter, and that's not a bad thing, but like Jupiter, whatever Jupiter touches, he makes super big. And Scorpio is all about secrets, the hidden, the underworld, the underbelly of a certain situation. So when you try to be of service, you naturally start to roll around in the mud and you start to expose all the things that are within the mud. And that's that's a tricky thing to be aware of um, and something that you might need a little bit better boundaries for um, and something that needs to be kind of understood about uh, your talent as well, because what would be professions that would leverage that skill? Yeah, you would be a great private investigator. You would be a great detective. Um, you would be a great counselor. You would be a great therapist. You would be a great influence for people who need their secrets exposed, for people who 
you're able to just get into their get into their heart space not just because of that scorpio moon who is intensely perceptive intensely perceptive like you feel you hear and feel and smell and taste when somebody is lying to you and that's just a, that's just what happens when you have scorpio so present in your chart but with Jupiter here, it's not just about knowing the secret, it's not just about having that power, but it's about exposing it. And it's about bringing it to the surface and ballooning it up. Um, and with Pluto here and the North Node here, those are some pretty powerful skills that you're going to need to, to rely on long term. So I would highly suggest you become a bounty hunter, a goth bounty hunter, dressed in black, hunting people at night, like great Scorpio aesthetic uh, with that. But I think, again, your ability to expose secrets is a valuable talent. We just need to use it in the right way. Then our second stellium of the chart is going to be uh, the Midheaven, the MC, um, as well as Venus and the Sun and Mars up in the ninth house of travel, foreigners, higher education, and spirituality. Uh, this is a little bit of a displaced, um, a little bit of a displaced energy, because what happens is the sun moves into the ninth house, and the sun in Aquarius, who embodies the, the sign of the genius, the sign of the, um, the mad scientist who locks themselves up in the tippy top of their castle, fiddling with their experiments and only descends maybe once every 10 years to give the cure to cancer to the people. You know, it's the Prometheus archetype. The sun in the ninth does function very well in Aquarius because it is a sign of higher learning and knowledge and it is a house of higher learning and knowledge. However, we have Venus who is eclipsed by the sun. She is combust, um, which means that when you start to investigate this house of higher learning and you start to delve into the world of what it means to me to be more valuable through the pursuits of higher education and travel and foreigners and all of the things that the nice the ninth the ninth house represents you start to lose your feminine aspects you start to lose your yin you start to lose um your ability to rest to find solace you start to get that wired up aquarian energy that starts to rattle your nervous system and make you very wiry very airy too airy in fact because your ascendant is already in an air sign and when you start to when you start to get too logical, when you start to get too detail oriented, when you start to get too specific or too cramming of your head with knowledge, your nervous system literally starts to skits out. From a medical astrology standpoint, we would want to make sure that you're ingesting enough fatty, a uh, fatty acids, oils, um, and even, uh, just making sure that you're, you're eating period because food as a grounding resource is going to be very important for your chart to regulate your nervous system. Um, yeah, your nervous system with Mars and Aquarius, which already tends to be pretty hypersensitive. Uh, Mars and Aquarius does tend to produce hives as well when it's triggered too much. So that might be something interesting for you to notice is like when you're, when you're specifically like going through your day and you're starting to get really, really kind of up here with your logical processing and your nervous system is operating at like 110%. Um, one of the things that you might notice is you might start to notice that your skin starts to get very itchy, very rashy, very hypersensitive, or expose some internal skin allergies or irritations, calf cramping as well, calf spasms, um, skin issues, peripheral nerve stuff, that's all kind of part of the package medically. But easy, easy if you ground. Uh, you do have the potential to make some really good money in your work. But again, we're dealing with Scorpio type work. So when it comes to your personal legacy of career, we really want to make sure that you're using your intuition. You know, I talked about Mercury and Pisces being a little bit more unfocused mentally, but what Mercury and Pisces can't focus on, he can intuit very well. So we need a profession that you use your intuition a little bit more. We need you to be tapping into the more sensitive side of you. We need you to master that side. Otherwise, you're going to start using your sensitive capabilities in ways that hurt others because these need these placements need to be exercised, right? And you can only logic yourself out of a paper bag for so many rounds of this game until you start to realize that it's not all about what can be written on paper and it's not all about what can be measured and in 
fact, the more you measure, the more your body starts to viscerally reject the measuring process. So it's a balance, just like anything else. But I think with your unique skills, we can start to harness your capabilities of your chart in ways that are not necessarily as um, normal as you would like to be. Because back to that Gemini ascendant, like, girl, you're a chameleon. Embrace it. Love it. Live it. You know, but don't expect yourself to put on a suit and tie and and play and play the role of the nice guy. You know, that's not necessarily going to be something that's sustainable. Love you, darling. So glad that we had this time together. Thank you for allowing me the pleasure of of reading your chart. Um, seam bounty hunter, got it. Perfect. That's if you take one thing away, you should be you should be a bounty hunter. Um. Okay, let's talk about Dylan. Dylan, cheers. Good morning. How are you? Okay. Okay, Dylan. What do we got? So we have a Leo Ascendant in this chart. Uh, brings that kind of fixed fire energy, that dramatic, royal, uh, prideful energy into the chart. The flashiness of Leo. I can't get over it. It's so spectacular. Um, love a good sequin. Love a good rhinestone. Um, but when we look at the North Node here, North Node in the first house of in Leo really tells us that it's 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 about mastering Leo qualities. It's really about mastering the idea of being seen. It's about mastering the idea of uh, being in the spotlight. It's about recognizing talent, and it's about you developing a personality of your own, like not necessarily relying on others so much. Because at the end of the day, you're born you. You die, you, you pick up friends along the way, you change to a certain degree, but it's all about you now, isn't it? Right? And that's not a selfish thing. That's a life thing. Like when everybody else leaves and you're kind of in your own head with your own feelings and your own stuff, like, can you process that? Uh, and very few people think that they, that they can. Um, and in your case, it's about mastering that process. Uh, okay, so... When we look at, let's see, what else do we want to talk about? Um, sun in Scorpio in the fourth as the chart ruler is an interesting placement. Again, with a combust Venus. Get uh, get over yourself. I can't. Uh, whenever I see Venus being mistreated, I just, I just get so huffy. Um, so we have the ruler of the chart, the sun in Scorpio, in the fourth house. When we have the ruler of the chart in the fourth house, it automatically means that this person is going to be attached to the family and the home. Um, having the son here really does put the ego, a sense of pride in the family. Um, but the son is still in Scorpio, which we talked about in the last chart as being very much about secrets, very much about the underworld, very much about the unseen. So the identification of the son in the fourth house of home and family means that there's a strong identification with the secrets of the family, the trauma of the family, the emotional potential toxicity of the family, but also the ability to transform the family dynamic and to be extremely sensitive in the family dynamic. We do have matriarchal karma that needs to be resolved in this chart because Venus is also in the fourth house co-present with the sun, but Venus is in a very shitty situation. She's in the following situation. So not only is she, the sun is at 12 degrees, Venus is at 14 degrees, she's combust the sun, she's too close to the sun, she's literally being eclipsed or burnt up by the sun's rays. So that's detriment number one. Detriment number two, she's also in Scorpio, the sign of her fall. So she's opposing her natal rulership of Taurus, which is not necessarily great. Venus in Scorpio is the exiled queen. She's the queen that has to go escape her treasonous overthrowers by living in the forest. You know, it's the, the regal, compassionate matriarch who gets overthrown by bandits, basically. And she has to rough it and tough it in the woods, and she becomes the witch of the woods. You know, that's, that's very much the Venus in Scorpio eclipse the sun archetype. So we have this matriarch, this matriarch, archal karma. We have Venus who's been kicked off of her throne. That's going to be a major family issue that needs to be resolved. So we're going to need to bring in some Venus remediation. We already talked about Mercury remediation, but it's pretty much the same thing with all the planets, just kind of making space for them in the physical home, setting up an altar. Venus's day is Friday, so making offerings of perfume or flowers um, or like lavender tea 
to Venus uh, on Fridays per day um, would be excellent way to kind of bring forward the Venus archetype, but also in meditation and in your spiritual practice, reaching back through your bloodline and trying to heal the feminine archetype, because it does seem like this Venus in the fourth is holding some serious baggage and some serious secrets that needs to be unpacked for sure. And there's no better skill for you to unwind all of this trauma and drama with than your exalted moon in Taurus in the 10th. I love this placement. Absolutely mwah, mwah, love this placement. A good moon is great because it means that there's strong emotional health in the chart, but an exalted moon in the 10th is even better. Like it really makes you to be the mom friend. It really does bring this, this, depth of compassion, this real strong emotional groundedness into the chart, it really does give you all the tools that you need to unpack the fourth house. However, with this with this Leo ascendant and this sun in Scorpio, we do have a, a sign based square that's happening between our two luminaries and our ascendant, which can be tricky. So there are three parts of your personality, hun. There's the Leo that wants to shine. There's the moon uh, who is shining. And then there's the sun in Scorpio who is hidden. The ascendant resents the moon for shining and the ascendant resents the sun for being hidden. The ascendant is evolving into the moon, uh, but the sun itself wants to keep things hidden and under wraps and resents the moon for her glow in the 10th. So there's this there's this kind of dynamic that we need to navigate, giving space for your Taurus moon, giving space for your Leo ascendant, giving space for your uh, for your Scorpio placements with the Sun and Venus. Uh, a knack for finances. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, Mercury and or uh, Mars and Virgo, very detail oriented very action oriented when it comes to finance. This can manifest as shopping sprees early on and impulsive spending because Mars is, Mars is the impulse uh, sign, but we do also have Jupiter in Pisces retrograde in the eighth house of business. And I think that um, if you were to have an entrepreneurial streak, that would be one of the ways for you to appreciate money a little bit better. Tame that Mars, uh, put a collar on that Mars and really start to leverage the Virgo of that Mars and Virgo, that detail oriented aspect. Because what's happening is that that eighth house Jupiter, who's in his right sign, although he is slow in retrograde, you know, he's ruling the fifth house of creativity and the second house of finance. Um, you running your own business and having your own side hustle would really give you a nice appreciation for money that I that I very much would enjoy seeing you having. Um, one of the other ways for you to lose money would be to dump it into a bunch of higher education and travel. You don't need it. You're creative. You're creative, you're inspired, you've got the tools that you need, you don't necessarily need the college experience, uh, you don't necessarily need to put yourself into a crap load of debt to travel the world and be on sabbatical, like that's going to be a money suck for you and we want to leverage your financial placements. So I would really encourage you to use a social media account, boost your following, get some creative juices flowing, make an online business happen, appreciate your money, become self-sufficient, and deal with some of the family trauma and drama and karma on the side. Excellent. Thank you, Dylan. I appreciate you donating your charts. That was that was super fun. That was a little bit of a roller coaster ride, but we're but we're good. Okay, we've got two more charts. We're gonna move on to Molly. Hello, Molly. Another Leo ascendant. Cheers. Ah, ah, but there's a great difference in this chart. A great difference. So as opposed to the North node being present in the first chart, which we just got done with, here we have the South node in the first house, um, which is completely different because the South node is the energy suck of the chart. Um, it's going to be where we find the least amount of energy and where we're actually moving away from. So in this case, Molly is here to break down her personality. Molly is here how to learn how to partner with others. Uh, Molly is here to uh, do some really fun things when it comes to, uh, oh goodness, the layers, the layers, the more I see, the more I'm getting sucked into other, other parts of the chart. Um, so we have lots of things to discuss here, Molly. Um, being selfless is one of them. Um, really making sure that you're able to bow appropriately, um, not just to others, but also to be humble. 
um, because not only do we have the south node uh, in the first house of Leo, uh, but we also have the ruler of the chart as uh, the sun in Taurus in the 10th, which is a very flashy placement. Um, it's, a, it's a very flashy placement actually. Um, and then Mercury is in Taurus retrograde as well. Um, so behind all of this flash, behind all of this fire is a very stubborn mind that we kind of need to break. We actually need to to shatter your, your preconceived notions of what life is. We need to break down your idea of what is okay and what is not okay. Like there's a lot of internal development work where we, we need to start understanding that your natural impulses are not totally here to serve you. Um, in fact, they can potentially be of great detriment to you uh, if you don't utilize them properly. And part of that is the, uh, the sun at 16 degrees opposing Pluto. Um, although it is separating, it is still a very valid opposition by degree. So there's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of deeper stuff that if you spend, let me let me put it this way, if you spend all of your time in the spotlight, if you spend all of your time garnering the attention of others, then you're wasting your time doing things that are superficial and that are trying to move you forward. When at this point you're, okay, let me, let me put it this way. When I talk to my clients about the potential of reincarnation, right, I normally talk about three life cycles. And I talk about the learning life cycle, the achievement life cycle, and then the breakdown life cycle. And you're in the breakdown life cycle. You're in that third part of the equation. So there are some charts who I see gradually making uptick, like they're learning, they're growing, they're striving, they're pulling themselves out of the mud. They're really kind of getting into uh, what it means to grow into their own shoes spiritually, right? Then we have the success placements. They're here to do the things in the world. They're here to use their power effectively, learn how to harness their own capabilities and really kind of shine from, from the highest peak. Your chart falls into the third category where we start to slope downward and we start to see that now that you've had your success, now that you've learned and you've grown, it's time to start picking apart the lessons that you've learned and get yourself ready for the next cycle where we start to learn new things. And you're really here to start breaking down your preconceived notions with the South Node in the first house. You're really here to start busting up that super stubborn Mercury and Taurus retrograde in the 10th. Um, and you're here to start learning how to balance, how to be humble, how to be of service to others. And there are a couple really strong placements for that. The first is going to be your moon in Libra in the third house of communication, which I absolutely love. A good moon in Libra brings emotional stability to the chart, although some indecision when, when Libra isn't expressed properly. But I love a good moon Libra placement because in the third house, it's, it's a, a very good peacekeeping uh, formation. And what that kind of naturally contradicts is your Mercury, your uh, your Venus and Aries in the ninth and in, in that again another detrimented Venus. Like I'm not a super fan of that Venus, who should be the goddess of unconditional love, is in the sign of the warrior. She's the warrior goddess Durga. Like she's she's here to cut off the head. She's here to defend the village. Like she's here to to rush in and make sure that she is the one with the flaming sword who who is able to slay the demon. And I think in this life we need to make sure that you're not the one taking all the credit, uh, that you're not the one who's being the savior, you know, that you're not the one who's wrapped into this story that I must be the one to do this thing because there will always be somebody else, darling. There will always be somebody else and you're here to be of service. And if your presence is not of service, if your skill set is not appreciated, you know, it's not up to you to try to steal the spotlight or to, to, throw yourself from behind the red curtain to to let your presence be known like no you're here to learn how to how to gracefully bow out gracefully surrender and start to listen start to learn from other people through the more receptive arts uh, that are not necessarily super present in your chart but that you're growing towards 
One of the biggest indications of this is in your relationship status. So we have the seventh house of relationships in Aquarius where the North Node is present. Um, and the North Node uh, is also being ruled by this retrograde Saturn in Capricorn in the sixth house of work, health and pets. You finding a spouse that you can go into business with and actually co-partner with, not just in life, but also in financial gain. I think that's going to be a really, really prominent part of the chart. But again, it's going to be about you taking the back seat and you not necessarily being the face of the company and for you to learn how to negotiate and for you to learn how to uh, create space for other opinions and to consider options as opposed to thinking that you know the way that it's supposed to be. Um, because frankly, in this chart, there are severe weaknesses, especially when it comes to business uh, with this Mars and Pisces in the eighth. But then also when it comes to relationships, like the Pluto and Scorpio keeps flashing its little head at me from the fourth house of family. And all of this, all of this kind of Pluto and Scorpio family underworld trauma, um, the secrets, the, the hidden toxicity that needs to be worked through that you would not be able to work through if you constantly try to push yourself out there and push yourself forward. Like we need to leverage this exalted Jupiter in Cancer in the 12th house of hidden enemies, hospitalizations, retreats, and karmic healing. Like we really need to make sure that your abundance and the leverage and the strength of your life in your chart is in the 12th house of healing. Yeah. Um, and you actually realizing your own weaknesses and surrendering to that as not just life lessons, but also as your truest power, um, because arrogance and um, I'm making this sound like a lot worse than it is, but I really feel the need to drive this home. Um, like you being you being you is not the most important thing this time around. And if you could take a back seat and watch other people do what they do, you'll realize that there are so many other ways to be than the one way that you that you think is the truest of true ways. Um, but that takes a lot of that takes a lot of ego checking. That takes a lot of therapy. That takes a lot of external circumstances kind of crushing you down, um, which you're certainly experiencing in the workplace because of all these recent Saturn transits. Like it is absolute bullshit in your sixth house of work, health, and pets right now. Major medical transits coming your way, like absolutely crazy. But if you learn how to surrender, if you evoke Saturn a little bit, if you learn restraint, there's going to be a lot of really nice development in your chart and becoming more well-rounded as a person. Okay, last chart before we wrap up. Last chart belongs to Mare. Hello, Mare. Cheers. Good morning. How are you? Scorpio rising. I like it. Scorpio rising with a Pisces stellium. Get out of town. Get out of town. Oh, but we have issues with that. We have issues with that Pisces stellium. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And then a Mars um, uh, in Aries moon just to make it that much more complicated. Uh, damn. Okay. Okay. How do we want to tackle this chart? So... Having a Scorpio ascendant makes you super sensitive, not just super sensitive, but also you have Sun in Pisces. So you have a double water sign thing happening. Whenever we see a multitude of one element in the chart, we need to learn how to master that element. You need to learn how to master the element of water, my dear. Um, if you don't understand that you're already hypersensitive, that you're already very intuitive, that you already have some boundary issues, uh, that we need to make sure to manage your emotions properly because they will uh, be the crux of your existence and not necessarily in a great way. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of kind of ifs, ands, or buts that we need to understand in the water and the emotional department, as well as the intuitive skills that kind of come along with that. Uh, it's actually not a place that you're like like you get it like you understand it south nose here like you've already mastered it it's not something that you need to like work super hard at but it is something that just needs to be respected and navigated um and owned really we do have the stellium in pisces which starts with jupiter in pisces the the greater benefic of the scheme in his rightful place of Pisces in the fifth house of children like it's a great fertility marker um it's a great uh 
it's a great marker for parenting. It's a great marker for creativity. It's a stellar creative marker, to be honest. Um, also, having the fifth house of creativity linked to the second house of finance uh, does bring a lot of creative endeavors to the surface financially, so I would recommend that you start an Etsy shop. Um, south node is here though in the fifth house, so creativity is very draining for you. Um, uh, your lymphatic system actually might be a little bit slow. There might be some immune issues that we need to that we need to tackle, uh, which stem from the which stem from the gut and the digestive system. Sun and Pisces combusting Jupiter though. That's that's rough. Um, you know, I think I think we can actually take a lesson from the last chart too, like. All of this watery stuff, you over-identify with it, and I get that, but it's actually not where you're supposed to be. Um, where you're supposed to be is this North Node in Virgo in the 11th house of friendships. Like, you're supposed to be learning how to uh, work within your community. You're supposed to be learning how to develop friendships that last. You're supposed to be learning how to do uh, some really nice community involvement, which, frankly, is going to put you closer to finding your spouse, your ideal mate, because Venus, who's also in the third house of community, uh, is ruling your seventh house of... Uh, of relationships. So there's a very strong chance that if you if you leverage that friendship house, if you actually get out and be a little bit more social instead of retreating like the water sign that you are and thinking like, oh, social social groups are too taxing for me mentally and emotionally, which is true, which is true. But if you learn how to put that aside and you actually start to leverage some of your strength socially, I think that that's going to be a, a super opportunity for you relationship wise to unearth some of those more grounded placements. We also have uh, we also have Mercury in Pisces, the sign of detriment, being slightly slightly combust, just a half a degree away from that combustion edge, um, which makes the mind a little bit a little bit tricky, a little bit watery. Very creative, very intuitive as well, but also tricky because the mind isn't rational in this case. Um, Mars in Pisces as well gives that indecision factor. Mars being that single pointed um, that single pointed planet of action in the dual natured uh, watery sign of Pisces. It's kind of like Mars the warrior trying to trudge through a swamp. Like it's just, it's slowing him down, it's weighing him down, it's getting him wet and sticky and gross. Uh, lots of, lots of kind of detriment there in the fifth house. But it's still blessed by Jupiter. Uh, we just need to learn how to navigate that a little bit because although children seem natural to you, they may also be a lot more taxing uh, than you've signed up for. Although creativity is something that you have a lot of, again, it might be a little bit more taxing than you signed up for. We might actually need to do some Jupiter remediation um, as well as some Mercury uh, remediation as well, if that is the case. Working with Pisces as a sign, learning that mutable water energy, that's going to be that's going to be some tricky stuff. We do have a, a nice a nice moon in Aries, but it's at 29 degrees, um, which again gives me that gives me that feeling that we need to learn how to change. Uh, whatever a major planet is right on that cusp, right on that edge, especially within one degree, I find that there's a um, there's a need for that planet to start rearranging its priorities. And for a moon in Aries, you know, the moon is is our emotional planet. It doesn't really like to be in that action-oriented, warrior, aggressive, cardinal fire sign of Aries. But it's at 29 degrees, 34 minutes in uh, to, to Aries. It's right on the edge of turning into an exalted Taurus moon. Uh, so developing compassion, developing unconditional love, especially for a spouse, um, is going to be one of the, the saving graces of the chart, really, because uh, it's one thing to be connected to everybody all the time, which Pisces uh, and Scorpio kind of feel at their heart of hearts, like your nervous system just extends beyond your body because that watery nature takes such a hold in your chart. But I think if you if we were to kind of progress your chart and we were to understand that an exalted moon in Taurus, that unconditional love that is grounded, that is resourceful, that is um, that is stable and grounded. That's really how we start to heal those Pisces placements and make sure that you're not just a fish flopping around on dry land, but that you actually are able to leverage some of your emotional strength for the highest good of others, but also draw some boundaries because Taurus is a great fixed sign when it comes to drawing lines in the sand. Uh, discrepancies with family because you want to expose their secrets and they would prefer to sweep it under the rug. Um, it's one of the it's one of the curses of being super intuitive, hun. I, I hate to break it to you, but when you enter a family situation and you're like, 
someone's hiding something from me. You know, it's it's just it's part of your placements and that's always going to make the family dynamic kind of difficult. It's always going to make it uh, rather one sided with you kind of knowing that something's up and them not wanting to admit it. But hey, you move on. It's just a thing. And yeah, I think the, the chart's starting to go cold. Uh, sun in the fifth house ruling the tenth. Uh, children will surpass you in fame and or lead to fame. Um, so again, mul multiple markers for fertility. I like the fertility equation. But again, if we if we leave all of our energy in the fifth house of children, parenting, sexuality, creativity, we're not going to be moving towards that north node in Virgo in the eleventh house of friendships. Uh, so I would highly encourage you to do a little bit more development, maybe study some astrology, learn how to work with some of these placements, because they're unique, they're powerful, um, but at the same time, they do require a little bit more finesse and care, uh, because like with fifth house stuff, like great, Jupiter and Sun and Pisces, but then uh, bad, Mercury, Pisces, South Node, Pisces, Mars, Pisces. Uh, so we've got this kind of give and take with your gifts. The blessing and the curses uh, of the water signs are really, really kind of thrown into thrown into your chart rather strongly. Uh, and we need to learn how to navigate those. Cool. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate everybody who's decided to join me on this lovely uh, hump day morning. Thank you so much for watching the live stream. Uh, it's been a pleasure to look over these charts with you. Again, I only have one more day of charts uh, in the queue. So tomorrow on Thursday, I will be uh, doing an all call on social media for more charts. Last time I did that, I got over 150 charts. Ha! <laughs> um, that's a lot of that's a lot of private messages. Um, so be on the lookout for that. But always private message me your details. Do not post them publicly. I need your birth date, your birth place, your exact birth time, and I will add you to the list. If you would like to work with me personally, if you would like to schedule a consult, you can always do so by booking uh, by submitting a consultation request through ScorpioRisingAstrology.com, which is my website. I also have online classes if you would like to learn astrology. Those are digital download pre-recorded, so you can just go ahead whoop, and start learning. Um, but that's it for today. Have a great rest of your week. Happy Monday. Happy Hump Day. Happy New Moon. It's going to be a freaking doozy because um, there's just a lot of not great aspects surrounding the the new moon so don't listen to all the hype of people saying that it's it is it's something better than it actually is anyway before i get off on a tangent may the stars be ever in your favor